I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Hello, I'm James Brown, and on behalf of the East End Church of Christ, located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to Tuesday's edition of Walking Through the Bible, a podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, if you have a Bible with you, please turn to the book of Genesis and we'll turn you over to Jeremy Dieselkamp for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the 31st lesson in our study of Genesis. Yesterday we covered Genesis chapter 6, verses 19 to 22, talking about the rest of God's commands to Noah concerning the ark. If you missed that episode and would like to watch it, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on our website at www.eastendchurch.org. You can also find them on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Christ under the Walking Through the Bible Genesis playlist. Today we're going to begin with Genesis 7, verse 1 and read through verse 5. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the English Standard Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Genesis 7, beginning at verse 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all the Lord had commanded him. In this chapter we have the culmination of Noah's work. Remember in chapter 6, God said that he would give mankind about 120 years to repent. Genesis 6.3 From taking the age of Noah from the time he had children to the age when Noah entered the ark, something we'll read of tomorrow, that means it took Noah about 100 years to build this ark. What did Noah do during that time? Well, besides building this giant ship-like structure with the help of most likely only his three sons, 2 Peter 2 verse 5 says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness to his generation. Those people didn't obey the gospel message, however, but nobody could say that God's message was kept a secret. Here in verse 1 of chapter 7, though we find that God's patience has finally run out, and he commands Noah and his family to enter the ark, for the Lord had seen that they are righteous. Moving on now to verse 2, you have another place where scoffers point to an apparent contradiction. If you remember yesterday, God told Noah that the animals would enter the ark in pairs. Yet here in Genesis 7, he said that the clean animals would enter by sevens, and the unclean animals by twos. Is this a contradiction of Genesis 6? No, for chapter 6 says they would enter in pairs, while chapter 7 specifies how many pairs. There is no contradiction if you read the accounts closely enough. There does seem, however, to be a disagreement between our English translations as to whether the Hebrew was meaning that seven pairs of clean animals were taken, in other words, 14 animals, or whether there were seven of every animal that was clean taken, seven in total. The reason for this disagreement is because the Hebrew manuscripts have the number seven written twice for clean animals. In other words, two sevens. But the number two written once for unclean animals, in other words, one two. The vast majority of commentators take this to mean seven clean animals, in other words, seven animals, with an extra one presumably meant for sacrifice in chapter 8. But there are a select few commentators who would disagree. For us to know for certain which English translation is the correct rendering is not necessary and doesn't change the meaning of the text, which was that Noah was to take on more pairs of every clean animal than unclean animal. Noah would have known what God was commanding and he fulfilled it. It is interesting to note, however, that clean and unclean animals didn't originate with the law of Moses. They were identified as such before that. We don't read of when God did this, but obviously Noah had been instructed in that. It was only after Peter's vision in Acts 10 that we have no distinction made by God of clean and unclean meat. So now we have revealed to us the complete instructions that God gave Noah for what animals were to be on the ark and how many of each were to be there. It would be enough animals to be able to repopulate this earth with all the animals we see today, 
And as we discussed yesterday, there would be more than enough room on the ark to accommodate all the animals that were present. How long did Noah have to fill the ark before God would send the flood? According to verse 4, he had one week, more than enough time, seeing as how the animals were to come to Noah, not the other way around. The flood would last 40 days and 40 nights and would kill everything on the earth. We'll discuss more of that tomorrow. But we'll conclude by saying that again, Noah did all that was commanded him. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we will continue our study of Genesis, beginning with Genesis 7, verse 6. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below or email us at answerintheword at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we'll be continuing our study of the book of Genesis. Goodbye for now and have a great day. I'm not a